Where was Jesus before the creation of the universe? The exact location of Jesus Christ during the Big Bang. In the beginning God created the world. The Bible says the world was without form and void. This means that nothing existed in the world before creation. The question people often ask is if the creation of the world was the beginning of things. Where was God before the creation? Even though we cannot answer that question definitively, we do know that God's existence is not subject to the machinations of time and space. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. But there is another important question that people ask. That is, where was Jesus before and during the creation of the world? Thankfully, this is one of the mysteries that Jesus himself shared with us. In this episode, we will reveal the exact location of Jesus at the time of creation. If you watch until the end, you will also learn the form of Jesus Christ and why there is no mistake in the fact that he is the Son of God. The revelation about the location and form of Jesus Christ is contained in the book of John. Prayers are not only a communion with God, it is a most self-revealing activity. Jesus' prayer in John 17 is one of the most significant chapters in the entire Bible. One can feel the very heart of Jesus as he prays to his Father. The Bible is filled with records of great prayers, from the prayers of Abraham to Moses, and from David to Solomon. But this prayer of Jesus is by far the greatest recorded in the Bible. According to the book of John chapter 17 verses 1 to 5, Jesus prayed as follows, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. That last statement is instructive. He said, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Clearly, Jesus was referring to the glory and majesty he shared with God the Father before the world existed. Genuine prayers often reveals a person's innermost being. It opens one's heart to God without reservations. This one tells about Jesus' intent, desires, and motivations. John 17 provides us with one more unique opportunity to see the nature and heart of Jesus. In this prayer, Jesus touches on many big notions developed in this gospel. He touched on glory, belief, the cosmos, and love. He also talked about his special relationship with his Father. The accounts in Genesis clearly shows that God was present before and after the creation of the universe. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Bible reveals the plurality of the God essence. It reads as follows. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. For our purpose, the most important part of that verse is the phrase, let us make. This clearly shows that God was not alone at the beginning of creation. There was someone else. Now we know who that person is. Jesus said, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. When Jesus uttered these words, he revealed to us that he was the person that was with God at the time of creation. This statement makes a lot more sense if we consider the fact that Jesus had to come down from his place of glory to take a human form so that he may die for the sins of the world. This assignment requires sacrifices and humility that would have been impractical had Jesus arrive in his full and glorious form. In fact, this is not difficult to imagine. 
This was the expectation of the leadership of the Israelite nation. It was the reason they rejected Jesus as the Messiah. During the time of Jesus, many Jews were living under Roman occupation, and they longed for a deliverer who would free them from foreign oppression. Their concept of the Messiah was heavily influenced by the Hebrew Bible, Old Testament prophecies, particularly those found in books like Isaiah, Jeremiah, and the Psalms. These prophecies described the coming of a future figure who would be an anointed one, or the Messiah, chosen by God to bring salvation, justice, and restoration to the Jewish people. Based on these scriptures and their collective history, many Jews at that time expected the Messiah to come in a powerful and kingly manner. They anticipated a military and political leader, like a new David, who would rise to prominence, defeat their enemies, and establish a renewed kingdom of Israel. This notion of the Messiah as a conquering hero who would liberate them from their Roman oppressors and restore Israel's sovereignty was prevalent among a large segment of the Jewish population. Alas, when Jesus arrived the world, he was manifestly ordinary in appearance. They did not believe that he was the Son of God, nor did they believe that he existed before the beginning of the universe. Yet, Jesus is the second person of the Holy Trinity, along with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. This belief is based on the doctrine of the Trinity, which teaches that God exists as three distinct persons in one divine essence. The New Testament of the Bible provides some insights into the pre-existence of Jesus. In the Gospel of John, for example, it is stated that, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1 verse 1. The Word, in this context, refers to Jesus and signifies His eternal existence as part of the Godhead even before the creation of the world. It is another proof that Jesus existed in a heavenly, divine state with God the Father before His incarnation as a human being on earth. Jesus was actively involved in creation and present throughout history even before He was born as a human on earth. Before His earthly manifestation as a human being, Jesus was King, as He is still a King. It is the glory of His kingdom that he asked God to restore when he prayed the prayer in John chapter 17. But it is important to note here is that Jesus was not seeking vain glory for selfish reasons. Even when he asked for the restoration of his glory, it was so that he could glorify God, his Father. The nature and form of Jesus before creation was exemplified in glory. There is no other way to describe it. In the book of Revelation, John sees a powerful Jesus that does not compare to any typical man. Revelation chapter 1 verses 12 to 16 reads, I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. John was clearly aware that the being he encountered in the Revelation was Jesus. We can only imagine what went through John's mind when he heard the voice. The robe that Jesus wore in the Revelation represented Jesus as the high priest for his people. John also said his head and his hair were white like wool, glistening white like snow. He said his all-seeing eyes were flashing like a flame of fire. This represents the passion of Jesus. In Greek literature, passionate eyes depict the supernatural and divine being. This description is similar to the narrative that we get of an angel in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 10 verse 6 which reads, His body was like topaz, 
his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. These descriptions serves to portray and emphasize Jesus' immense grandeur. Even the three years that John lived on earth with Jesus did not adequately prepare him for the moment where Jesus appeared to him in his heavenly majesty. At that moment, John realized the immensity of the divine power and majesty Jesus gave up while living on earth. The great miracle that we do not talk about is that Jesus could conceal that immense glory and authority while he walked as human on earth. The form described by both John and Daniel is the true form of Jesus before and after the creation of the universe. Lastly, the title of this episode referenced the scientific theory of the Big Bang. Because of time, we are not able to include the alignment of the biblical story of creation in Genesis with the scientific theory of the Big Bang. Check out this video for the amazing discussion on the issue. The link will be in the description. Thank you for watching. Tell us what you think of this episode in the comment section. We like to learn from you. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. God bless you. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.